Hello there. Ed, compare the midsole bud here. Today, comparing the Invincible Run Flyknit 2 from Nike versus the rest. Part one. Hey cats, an Invincible Run roundup for you here. Pitching Nike's Max Cushion Monster up against some other contenders. I'm considering performance, price, and of course, versatility. Got a few more miles into this one now and I think I've got a reasonably rounded opinion. If you're enjoying the content on the channel and you haven't done so already, help us out by hitting that subscribe button and clicking the bell below for notifications of when we launch those new videos for you, like some sort of digital rocket. You can also help us out by giving this video a thumbs up like and also sharing it with your running buddies. There's a new feature on YouTube as well which is called Super Thanks. You can click the button below and ask me some sort of question and help support the channel out with a few Earth credits. It's always appreciated people. The first contender up against the Invincible Run Flyknit 2 is the Cloud Monster from On Running. Now I've got to state I don't think that this is a Max Cushion shoe because there's not an awful lot of midsole here really. Certainly a touch lighter in terms of weight. It's probably because there's not quite as much foam to contend with. The underfoot feel in the On Running Cloud Monster is certainly a little firmer. I wouldn't suggest it's in any way uncomfortable, but you've got that speedboard underfoot and then those cloud tech pods. There we go. Gotta get the terminology right or the geeks start kicking up a fuss. It's certainly a firmer underfoot feel than in the Invincible Run. It's also a lot quieter underfoot than the Invincible Run. Outsole volume does appear to be a bit of a thing these days. Some people don't like certain shoes because they're simply too loud. Too many decibels. Maybe I can construct some sort of scientific video where I run past a microphone and record how loud the shoes are. If you'd like me to do that, put it in the comments and I'll think about it. It's more of a squid-like squash here in the Invincible Run 2. A little bit like you're running on a load of very wet beach towels. Just imagine that for a moment. Yeah, it's not very nice, is it? The Invincible Run from Nike certainly has the on-running Cloud Monster beat though for outsole grip, grand grip, and traction of the triumphant variety. There's a plentiful supply of the Bowerman Waffle Iron Protrusions. The upper on the Cloud Monster is cloud-like in terms of its weight. And it's very thin, if you're worried about breathability that much, this is probably the way to go, rather than the Invincible Run 2. People keep talking about heat over here in the UK, it's really not that hot. I think it's going to be warm later on this week, maybe for like two days or something, and that's it. I don't have too many problems with the uppers on running shoes. They tend to be much of a muchness. No major issues in the Invincible Run 2 upper for me whatsoever. And it's also as comfy as a DFS sofa. I think with a similar price point to both of these shoes, if I could only have one, I'd probably pick the Invincible Run on this comparison. All right. Second shoe in today's comparison is the Optimus Autobot of running shoes, the Adidas Adizero Prime X. My shoe of 2021, I think. I really like the Adios 6 as well, but this one had just a little bit over the top of that. It's an absolute beast with all manner of tech built into that midsole. I mean, you've got rods, you've got plates, you've got Dolby noise reduction, and a 78 RPM speed selection too. The last two were a lie, but you get the picture. The Invincible Run Upper looks like one of Grandma's jumpers compared to the Adi Zero Prime X. It really is a wonderful upper here, very light, almost see-through. It's like a minimal outfit here, like speedos and nothing else. Meshy panels and well-placed overlays are all you need. It's a triumph in terms of design and functionality as well from Adidas. We always get that from those guys. Apart from all the other shoes they've done where it isn't like that. Maybe like the Adi Star and some of the Ultra Boost models and yeah. Well you get the picture. It easily overtakes the Invincible Run in terms of lower weight and propulsion underfoot. It does feel like the most assistive shoe that you've ever worn. Imagine Zebedee, but wearing those springs that you put on your wall to stop the door from hitting them. The ones that go, you know the ones. Just less weight here and more of the good stuff. 
Traction's comparable over the two shoes. I really did enjoy the traction here in the Primex. Oh, what a shoe. Just holding it in hand again makes me feel all gooey. I think the Invincible Run 2 just edges it though in terms of multi-terrain traction. And I think if stability is your game, then you'll probably want to go with the Invincible Run flying it too. I just can't say that the Primex is a very stable shoe. You're up so high in that one. In my UK 11, I think it was about 56 millimeters in the heel. I think the Invincible Run will perhaps edge it for you if you are looking for stability and cushion. I mean, cost's going to be a concern too here. 220 smackaroonies here in the UK. I mean, that's close to the Vaporfly Next Percent 2 over here, and it makes the Invincible Run look like a bit of a bargain, really. If I had to have one, though, I would have to pick the Primax. This shoe was just magic on foot to me. At least for now, anyway. Mmm, really fancy a nice bowl of Ewok crisps with some fresh, cold milk. More shoes now. The A6 Nova Blast 2 is up against the Invincible Run. Lower in weight and lower in price. Bit of a dead heat though between these two shoes if you ask me. A slightly thinner upper on the Nova Blast 2 from A6. There's just a little bit less of it and that might be right up your street. I would say the Flight Foam Blast in the A6 Nova Blast 2 isn't quite as forgiving underfoot as the Invincible Run 2. I mean you've got a slab of Zoom X there. It's Almost like running on the stuff you pull out from the box of your new TV. I wouldn't suggest though this is in any way uncomfortable to run on though. It's hardly a walk across a Lego minefield. I do think the Invincible Run 2 though has the edge in terms of outsole grip between the two shoes. Yes, the A6 Nova Blast 2 outsole is as durable as a Nokia 3210, but the lug depth lets it down on some more varied surfaces, which the Nike Invincible Run 2 will have no trouble traversing. I think the price of the Nova Blast 2 is also about as attractive as a 1950s Telecaster and I think the varied usability that you can get from this shoe will attract many a runner like a bee to nectar. But I think for me the midsole alone just makes it a bit of a win for the Invincible Run 2. I just feel it's got a little bit of an edge over it. In fact, I find it a little bit more stable than the Nova Blast 2. It's just so forgiving and an easy choice to put on if your tired 43-year-old legs are saying, Ed, can I have a break? And you say, no, no, it's not happening. Just get on with it. Last one up today is the Boston 10 from Adidas. Well, it's got a couple of things going for it. You know, it looks all right. It's quite a nice profile to the shoe. I think this shoe makes the Invincible run a bit like a fun leap around on a bouncy castle. It's a more guided and firm ride here in the Boston 10. I think the weight of the shoes is practically the same in my size and there's no comparison in terms of what's more enjoyable to run in. You've got both Light Strike Standard and the Pro version here in the Boston 10. And it did get better after some more miles, but it's no match for the Invincible Run 2. Just less forgiving in the midsole here. Just wish we had a little bit more Light Strike Pro, really. It feels like quite a meagre portion in the Boston 10. A bit less propulsive and one for those who like a more stable ride from their running shoe. Outsole-wise, I think the Invincible Run 2 will take some beating here, as in the Boston 10 won't beat it and you can get a lot of miles into it. I mean, it's really durable and there's loads of it too. Full coverage across the outsole. It's almost like you've got a load of octopus tentacle suckers that just grip onto the road. The Boston Tent Upper is rather present on foot and I found it a bit constrictive really. There's just more room in the Invincible Run flying it too. I think that'd be my instant choice if I had to go between the two shoes for practically any run at all. I think the Boston 10 was pretty quickly discounted across most online stores, and I think that's all you need to know about the comparison between these two shoes. I'll come up with some more comparisons down the line for you once I've plowed some more miles into this Zoom X shoe, enjoying it so far. If you've got any thoughts and opinions on those or some other comparisons that you want to see in the future, let me know down in the comments. Musical interlude today from A Tribe Called Quest. Check the rhyme. This one's got a beautiful, smooth groove to it. Lots of nice percussion there layered in the background. All of the sounds just complement and kind of build around the vocals as well. Nice and clear, really nice little bass sections. They don't sort of 
overwhelm the track. Just another really nice smooth groove for you. If you like that sort of 90s hip hop, this one's one for the summer. Check the rhyme by A Tribe Called Quest. Thanks for sticking with me to the very end of today's video. It is always appreciated. Hit us up with a super thanks if you've got a specific question about any of the recent shoe reviews. Hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.